Let's, before we go forward, talk about what we're going to do and what we're not going to do here. So we're not going to explain what it meant when he said that one stone won't be left upon another. The only reason I read that verse is because the people are going to now ask, when is that going to happen, whatever that is? Because there's a lot of arguments about what that means and what buildings were going to be not left on each other and every, whatever it was. So we're not going to debate that today. He's going to mention some end time events here. We're not going to debate those either. Okay, But I want us to understand the point of connecting up the part of this that has to do with understanding salvation. Okay, That's a verse that is absolutely used as a weapon or used inappropriately a lot of times. Well, people will point the finger and accuse people. See? See? The, the love of many are growing cold. Well, what leads to that? The lawlessness. So let's make sure that we're talking about the love that's connected to lawlessness. So what's the love that's connected to the law? Because without the law, love is growing cold. So what are we told? The two great commandments. Love your creator and love each other. That love grows cold because we're not keeping the commandments that tell us how to do those two things. Now remember, deliverance, or which I think is a much better word for saved in most cases, you may have absolutely been delivered out of ignorance. Basically, hopefully that's happening every day. You're being more and more delivered out of ignorance. You may have been delivered out of a lifestyle that was not really good for you, or an addiction that wasn't good for you, or relationships that weren't good for you. These are deliverances. So yes, he has saved you. Coming to know him has saved you from certain things. It doesn't make you have a status called saved. And by the way, as we do that, we're also rubbing up against each other, and a lot of people are realizing they're not really good at echad because their, their dysfunctions, their brokenness, their uh, whatever you want to put in there, all these things that don't work right or don't work at 100% are now being exposed more and more. And I have to keep telling people, stop running away. Stay in the body. Let's deal with these things. All right? And I ask you the same with me. I've got my own issues and brokenness and damage, and so I don't always handle things well. Don't run away from me. Let's work this out. They possessed it. They took it. They said, okay, I now have a fiduciary responsibility to do something with what was given to me. To have it bear fruit, to have it bear some sort of product, productive thing. It wasn't just get In other words, they asked the question, why would he give this to me? Just to spend it? Why did he give me this silver? Why did he call you into the body? Why did he give you open eyes and open ears? Why did he give you all the things that you have? Why did he give it to you? Just so you can enjoy life yourself and have your own abundance or whatever? What was this purpose of calling you and giving you what he's given you? Isn't that the covenant, basically? You hear and do? And so why does Yahweh get so mad at Israel over the centuries? Because he gave and they didn't do. They didn't take the talents and the blessings and what was offered. They could have still been, to this day, we could all still be right in the land, no problem with the weather, no problem with productivity, no problem with fertility, no problem with ever being attacked by other... They could have had all those Deuteronomy 28 blessings. But they didn't possess. So it was taken away. Apparently, James didn't get the rest of mainstream Christianity's memo that the Torah is a horrible, burdensome thing, and it's not freedom. He calls it the Torah of freedom. Matter of fact, in verse 25 of chapter 1, he said, He that looked into the perfect Torah, that of freedom, and continues in it. This is not a different Torah than the one given by Moses. Same Torah. There's no different Torah given. So in case someone's thinking, oh, well, it's just the red-lettered words of Yeshua. Well, somebody should make all everything Yahweh said red. Then we'd have a more full understanding. Show me your belief without your works, and I shall show you my belief by my works. Because he says, that, he's basically saying, that's like stupid. How could you say, well, you have belief, but I have works. What do you mean? That? If you have works, you have belief. Everything you do is based on what you believe. Every work you do is based on some belief. By the way, doing nothing is also a work, and it's based on a belief. When you choose to do nothing, you do it because you believe something. So it's still a work. Do you want a midrash and a Torah teaching and a Torah portion teaching? Here's your Torah portion teaching for, for, this, for that part right there from Genesis. James is now teaching you 
the Torah portion that deals with this part, what it means when it says Abraham believed and it was reckoned to him for righteousness. It was reckoned as righteousness because righteousness by definition is doing the right thing, doing what is right. And so his belief was what? Was what? That if Yahweh says it, it's right, I better do it. And so he manifested through his actions the fact that he actually believed it. <laughs> 